name is Sandra Kim, and I'm going to be your main trainer for today's workshop, which is called Healing from Toxic Whiteness to Better Fight for, Social, for Racial Justice. Sandra Kim is the founder of Everyday Feminism, a site which launched in 2012 and has become known even among many feminists for its ridiculous content, considered trashy clickbait that preys on the concerns and good intentions of progressives, poorly written and shallow. It features articles such as how white Americans' hatred of racism actually supports racism, why wearing camo can be anti-feminist, and a moving piece on how feminism has been like a born-again religion for me. Once the author found it and let it into her life, everything made sense, and she felt compelled to spread the gospel because it taught her that bad things in her life were never her fault, and it explained essentially every awful thing in the world. These three articles are from this last month alone. Kim has built her career in activism and helping people become free of toxic messages from systemic oppression. She is a person with multiple marginalized identities and is a board member of Brown Boy Project, a community of masculine of center women, men, two-spirit people, trans men and our allies, committed to transforming our privilege of masculinity, gender and race into tools for achieving racial and gender justice. Some of Kim's articles on the site include Six Ways to Talk to Your Son About Male Violence and Healthy Masculinity, and Why Everything You Know About Feminists is a Vicious Conservative Lie. And so this is, a, this is the launch, actually, for a new program that we are offering now through the Passion Activism and Everyday Feminism. And we're super, super, super excited to be doing it because, as you know, you know we talk a lot about racial justice at Everyday Feminism. That would be an accurate statement. The site features at least one race-baiting article a week. So imagine my excitement when a pop-up ad appeared for their course, Healing from Toxic Whiteness. Dear white people, if you're a white person trying to take action against racism, this situation may sound familiar. You're sitting in a room with people of colour, talking about racism and social justice. You know enough about white supremacy to not take up all the space in the room. Too often, you've seen white people focus on how upsetting noticing racism is for them personally, as opposed to focusing on the daily trauma and actual impact on people of colour and what needs to be done to stop it. And you definitely don't want to do that. But you're not quite sure when or how you can process your feelings around white supremacy, or if it's even okay to. And all of that keeps getting in the way of you knowing how to take action. This in-between space of no longer wanting to be part of the problem, but still fumbling with understanding how to be part of the solution, can lead you to feeling guilty for how you benefit from white privilege, but not knowing how to give it up. Confused about what to do, but not wanting to ask and show your ignorance. Afraid of accidentally perpetuating white privilege, so you remain quiet. Defensive when people call you out for racism, since you're trying your best. Wanting to distance yourself from those bad, obviously racist white people. That's why we've created a system designed to help you untangle all these threads and more. In our newest free compassionate activism online workshop, Healing from Toxic Whiteness to Better Fight for Racial Justice, we'll share how you can stop this cycle of feeling stuck and heal from the harm of white supremacy, starting with yourself. You'll learn the four core pains that drive all of the outrage, denial, guilt, and fear preventing white people from taking action for racial justice, including and especially for yourself. A completely new way of looking at white supremacy as something that has caused pain, suffering, and trauma across generations of white people in addition to people of colour. A powerful mindfulness practice that will help you get in touch with that pain and suffering and how to take care of and release it with compassion. How to transform your interactions with other white people by connecting your ability to work with your own pain with ability to work with other white people's resistance to taking action. About our upcoming eight-week program dedicated to helping you turn what you learn in this workshop into a daily practice through community-based group training and individual coaching. Over the last four years of Everyday Feminism's magazine, we've received hundreds of messages from white folks asking for help on how to truly divest from white supremacy and work in solidarity with people of colour. We've heard this call and developed this program to address this need because we know that without the right tools, we struggle to fully show up in our fight for justice. The current status quo of systemic oppression will never change unless everyone, including and especially those who benefit from it, breaks free from its grip on our world. If you're ready to join us on this journey, we're happy to have you. I genuinely wasn't sure that the course could get any more cringeworthy than that summary. No everyday feminism. I've never felt guilty, confused, afraid and defensive because I'm talking to a black person. Because I'm not a racist, so I have nothing to feel guilty about. And I don't hang out with racist black people who will make me feel those things when I've done nothing wrong. I've never wanted to distance myself from those bad, racist white people. Because I am white, I couldn't distance myself if I tried, and even if the majority of white people were racist, I'm an individual and not a representative of a collective. What's telling, though, is that you believe white people should feel these things. That's the only way one can even begin to purge the sin of their skin colour. Guilt, confusion and fear are necessary, even desirable. Your aim is purportedly to help white people get in touch with the pain. 
Could it be that rather than getting in touch with repressed pain, you actually aim to instill those feelings in people? Could it be that you want to cement your own power by making people feel so badly about their own internalised white privilege that they crave your approval and will do anything to maintain it? And if so, doesn't that sound just a little cult-like? But I digress. The course began with a survey to prepare us for what we were going to learn. Of course, like all good social justice resources, it was segregated by race. Like all forms of systemic oppression, white supremacy is deeply embedded and normalised in our society, so it's an ongoing journey to identify how it shows up in our lives, unpack its impact on us and others, and become free from it. That way we can shift from being unconsciously conditioned by racism to consciously choosing to disinvest from white supremacy and to take action for racial justice. The first action is to begin noticing how toxic whiteness has conditioned you to unintentionally perpetuate and to be complicit with racism either with your action or lack of action. Please note that there's a section for white people and one for people of colour. People who identify with both can respond to whichever section they feel called to complete. For white people. What does toxic whiteness mean to you? And how does it show up in you and your life? What are some of the most difficult things for you as you unpack how white privilege has shaped your life? What gets in the way of your making more anti-racism actions in your everyday life? What would be different or possible for you if you were better equipped to process the emotional struggles in addressing racism within yourself and with other white people? For people of colour, while this online workshop is primarily for white people, it is also open to people of colour interested in better understanding the emotional resistance that many white people have to addressing racism within themselves and their communities. What drew you to want to participate in this online workshop? What do you hope will be different for you from learning about what's behind many white people's emotional resistance? And then comes the mother of all trigger warnings. How will you take care of yourself if parts of the online workshop are difficult for you to witness? It is often very painful for people of colour to witness white people realising the terrible reality of racism because it shows what different worlds we live in and how much white supremacy has conditioned white people to disregard its traumatic impact on people of colour. Since this online workshop is designed to hold the space for that difficult realisation by white people, we advise people of colour who choose to participate to be prepared with some self-care actions, just in case it becomes emotionally difficult to witness. And just to introduce you to some of the other people who are we're here with me, Dara Silverman. She is going to be supporting me um, in today's training, as well as in the, in the longer 10-week program. And so if I like, you know, if you could just introduce yourself and your work and why you're here. Hi, everyone. My name is Dara Silverman. Uh, I'm really honored to be here. Um, I've been a community organizer for the past 20 years. And for the past two years, I've been the founding director of Showing Up for Racial Justice or Surge. Um, before that, I was the director of a group called Jews for Racial and Economic Justice in New York City. Um, and basically, I'm just here because I think it's so crucial that white people take a role in fighting for racial justice and in realizing what our own stake is in ending white supremacy. And to do that, we have to work on our own pieces of this internally, in our communities, um, with our families, and then institutionally and structurally as well. Our token white person for the course is Dara Silverman another woman who has made an entire career out of social justice, primarily in the field of racism. She is known for writing articles about how difficult it was to shift attention back to her pet issues after 9-11, and when asked this year to describe the attacks in her own words, spoke only about the attacks and violence toward Muslim, Arab and South Asian communities, and how the whole thing ought to contribute to the dismantling of white supremacy. Thank you. Um, and Josette, do you want to share a little bit? Hey all, I'm Josette. I am the program director of Everyday Feminism. I've been with the magazine for about two years almost, and it's been quite a journey. Um, it's, I mean, we're, we've grown exponentially. I think when I started, we were at like 250,000 fans, which is a lot. Uh, it was only two and a half years old, but now we're over 500,000. So um, I've got to see a lot of that growth. And I've also got to see the growth of compassionate activism, which is what this model is based on. And it's changed my life, so, <laughs> like, completely uh, beyond words. I can't even really describe it um, without going into too, a lot of detail, but um, I've seen it 
change the lives of hundreds of people. And I, I love being a part of this work every single day. Um, I'm really honoured to be here. So besides her life-changing work with everyday feminism, Josette Souza has a degree in Africana Studies and has worked a few jobs at places with names like Africa Education and Latin Negras Project. Her work on site includes Dear White America, You Are All Responsible for Trump, How to Tell When to Drop That Friend and Focus on Yourself, Why Networking is Entitled, and a particularly bad comic about how stupid it is to complain about censorship when really... We are equating not being allowed to move through the world uncriticised and unchallenged, even in privately owned spaces, with the government preventing us from expressing our views in public. Josette is also known for her campus activism, where she participated in no platforming speakers she didn't like, making statements such as, Ray Kelly is a terrorist, and he's terrorising our communities. Until you feel terrorism in your life, I don't think you have the right to speak on this subject. Ray Kelly was a respected NYPD police commissioner, and the students were successful in having his lecture cancelled. So, we're going to get started now. 